dysfunctional vent with my entourage. And what we're going to be discussing today is maintenance of your M1A1 main tank for this ongoing conflict with invasive species and weeds. We're going to be looking at mechanized artillery. So let's see what we have to work with. When they get to playing, I got to get away from them. They're actually playing. May not look like it, but they're playing. They just play too rough, and when they hit me, I get knocked down, and then they get on top of me to see what's wrong, and then I can't get up. Are y'all done playing? Almost. When I'm not down there to be knocked down, they don't seem to want to play as much. Snack. Snack. Now we got to give them a snack. But that stopped them from playing so we can get back to our maintenance of our mechanized artillery. And that's how it's done. Let's look at the mechanized parts of our tank. We start with a mechanical valve which allows fluid to flow. We have a filter up here to catch any dirt that gets into the top of it. <coughs> we have a mechanical pressure gauge which I've never used. We have a mechanical pressure relief right back here, right there. And then we have a mechanical pressure pump right up here at the top, which we're about to disassemble. These represents the mechanical parts of your artillery in your ongoing conflict to control weeds and invasive species. This can also be used against um, ground forces such as your roaches, ants, and of course your airborne units, spiders, and things like that. Again, identify the pest before you get the pesticide. The law is the label in the United States and violations back in 2005 for violating the label for $75,000 per incident per day. So if you spray over here and you spray over there in the same day, that's two different incidents. $75,000, $75,000, do the math. You do not want to get yourself in trouble and trust me, with the government being low on funds, they're beginning to go out and look at what people are doing with pesticides, especially if you have a license. But let's go ahead and disassemble this and let's see what we have to work with. Having pulled the turret of our artillery piece, we want to make sure that this piece is locked together. These pieces, there's a separation right, right here. And we should be able to pull this apart with very little effort. There we go. I don't know if you can see it, but all kinds of little critters and things have gotten down inside this tube. So what we're going to do is we're going to blow some of this crud out of here. We're going to draw our barrel out. 
and all this needs to be cleaned up. It's got a lot of dirt on there. The barrel is clean. I need to just wipe it out with a paper towel and then add a layer of grease in here and then we'll clean this up. First thing we want to do is we want to blow all this off. If you look, these O-rings don't fit all that well. See how that plays? That's not a good fit. In fact, it's a very bad one. But what we're going to do now is we're going to wipe this off with a paper towel and I'll grease everything up. We'll put it all back together and put it back into service. I'm using 90 PSI pressure because that's what this is rated at. Alright, this is all the grease that's needed. We'll put some on here in just a minute. We'll smear that around. Get some debris off that got onto it. Now, we inspected this off camera. It's in good shape. We take the rest of this. We smear a layer inside of here. Pretty good. We take this grease right here. You can't overuse the grease that's on here. You can be as liberal with this as you want. It's not going to hurt anything. I'm going a little bit on the conservative side. In fact, way on the conservative side. I'm also going to put just a little bit of grease up here on this ring to help keep it from galding. Galding is a process where two different metals exchange electrons, ions, and they sort of weld each other together. Alright, this is now back together. We push this in. We have to work the O-ring in a little bit. Alright, it's in place. Now we push this back together. If you notice, there's dimples right here. Gonna have to just shove it on there. All right, took a little effort, but I pressed it on. It's now ready to go. I actually need to put some oil on this, which I'm going to do off camera, and then we're going to put it all back together. The only time adding too much oil it says oil here. I also put some on the shaft. I can't see that. This is where you add the oil down into this well, and I added some onto the shaft. The only time when adding oil into this can really be a problem is if, uh, if you put too much oil, is what I'm getting at, is if you're inside a building with nice woodwork and such, and you're spraying for uh, dismounted combat troops such as your ants and roaches, maybe some fleas. Hopefully you don't have bed bugs. Anyway, but... The only time that's a problem is if you're spraying inside a building if you add too much. Usually just a few drops of oil works. The oil lubricates the O-ring as it runs up along with the grease that was put in there earlier. It is now ready to be reassembled and or filled with fluid for use to go to war. <coughs> Hope you enjoyed this presentation of maintaining your M1A1, your main battle tank, <laughs> in your ongoing war with arthropods and invasive plants. Dysfunctional vet out.